I'm J.D. Green. I've been a face on the radio in Vermont for well over 20 years. And although I've loved my career in radio, I had a vision about bringing my connection to the community to a different platform, to social media, where I could create a blueprint of a podcast that's something constantly evolving, knowing that there's always room for new experiences and learning, discovery, exploration, new questions to ask, and answers to be sought after. A program without limitations, but still with intention to tell a more in-depth story behind what makes us tick, what inspires us, what makes us realize that the what and when is only secondary to the how. And it's the how and the why that I want to uncover. It's my hope with this podcast that I can inspire, inform, that we can learn together and tell the bigger stories behind our lives. That's our story. My real story off the air. I'll try to push the boundaries, arouse your curiosity, and ask the questions you want answers to. Maybe questions no one's asked. The good and the not so good. What's going on in Vermont as well as across our great country? Things you'll agree with, things you might not. It's my hope to laugh with you, cry with you, entertain and enlighten you, but mostly learn with you. Please make sure to support your local public access TV station, subscribe to my YouTube podcast, Aired Out, engage by sharing your comments, and invite your friends to be part of it too. Thanks for tuning in. This is Aired Out. Welcome to Aired Out, our sponsors, CBDCrave.com, Peak Entertainment of Vermont, New Hampshire, and Fontaine Forestry and Millworks of East Montpelier. Uh, Thank you so much for subscribing to the channel, for liking, for commenting, for sharing. Uh, We do appreciate it. Thanks to Tony Campos and Abubakar here, our producer at CVTV, Public Access Television, Channel 192 and 194 in Barrie. Uh, where this is filmed. Uh, Very excited to have on our guests today. Uh, Today we are airing out the world's largest snow softball tournament, the Freezing Fund for Families, uh, which is held proudly right here in Vermont and now embarking on its 20th year. Uh, In the last 19, this single event has helped over 40 families uh, that have children battling cancer. Uh, right next to me, Chris Cataret and Corey Touchette. Congratulations on the 20th year, man. Thanks, this buddy. is just stellar. Congratulations. You guys, uh, first of all, what the, what the hell happened to all of your hair, brother? I mean, <laughs> come on. What's going on here? I am uh, setting a trend, as you can see Chris is following. <laughs> I think Chris might be in the lead uh, at this point. Well, I have four kids. Well, okay. So. I'll say no more. I only have one, so I, um, I'll be losing mine at some point. You guys, um, uh, I don't. I, is, where do we begin? Should we start um, year number one? Um, I can't believe this is twenty years that this has been going on. This started with Cass and Shelley Brissett, who started this event, and um, now here we are, twenty years later. You've had the 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 helm. Um, Corey for quite a while now and you've been you've been sharing the airways with me uh, talking about this for quite a while you're the executive director I am um, roles change a little bit since the first time that we uh, we got together yeah. and um, from the guy that was wouldn't say anything on the radio to, yes I remember <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to, to where we are now um, but yeah and just to maybe go in chronological order um, in 1999 uh, Cass and Shelley, they were, you know, great, great folks. Well, still are. I say were. They're still with us. They're great yes, people. Yes, of course. Um, they they wanted to raise some extra money to offset some of the costs of their um, co-ed softball, like their summer league. Yeah. So Cass, being the inventive guy he is, says, why don't we play some softball in the snow? And they're like, oh, great. So eight teams got together. They raised 800 bucks. I don't know what that offset, but it kind of triggered a – a trend you know the next year people were like hey you still gonna do that that snow softball thing and uh he was like sure um 
but the second year in, in 2000 was kind of the the brainchild of it now going to help people in the in the community um they donated there was 10 teams they raised a thousand dollars and they gave the money to the more memorial of, of arthur rice uh, a guy in the community who had passed away shortly before the tournament that's the year i remember too it was was 2000 yeah year, so that was technically year two it was technically year two wow and so it, it kind of uh it really took off from there and growing well as you saw but well before i even got involved um, you know, it kind of caught fire and, and Cass would come up to the stations and he's like, hey, I've got X amount of teams this year and we're helping helping this family. I think the the first uh, child that we helped was a kid from right here in Barry, Cameron Royce, who, if I'm not yeah. mistaken, is graduated high school yeah. now. You know, he's yeah. off and running and, uh, yeah. you know, and, and then it just kind of took off and, and you know Cass and Shelly as well as I do. Um, you know, it, it was something they were passionate about, and they were, yeah, very. you know, they jumped in feet first, and, you know, they, they grew the event to, uh, I think the last year that they were really uh, engaged was their 10th year in 2008, yeah. and they had helped to furnish uh, a comfort room. Yes. At the uh, Central Vermont Hospital. I for forgot all about room. that. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and, and I think, uh, you know, as things grow, um, you know, you it, it, it takes up a lot of your time, and you know they were they were getting a little burnout and i just happened to be at the 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 dinner dance at that time uh where Cass kind of announced his retirement speech and i was in the crowd and i wrote a letter to the times argus and i said hey community let's not let something this great um you know go away and again in true Cass fashion he called me up he says feel that strongly about it take it over so yeah, that's, that's <laughs> so, so here cash. here we are <clears throat> right here we are so that's wow. kind of the the first decade of um a freezing fund for families you know really just the uh, more the the growth of the fundraiser the the co-ed soft the winter co-ed softball tournament is really what that first 10 year was 10 years was was growing that event building some notoriety getting people engaged getting the community involved um you know, raising money for a great cause that people could get behind. Um, and as I came on, uh, Cass stuck around kind of in a, an introductory role. That's when, in you know, 2009 is when we set the, the Guinness World Record. Yeah, I was going to ask um, you the year on that. Yeah, and that's when uh, when he kind of took me around and made all the introductions. He didn't just leave me high and dry and say, here's this great thing, now do yeah. it. Yeah. Um, he took me around. Uh, I got to meet you. I got to meet some other radio personalities. You know, great folks uh, at Casella's who still oh, to yeah. this year sponsor us with their, you know, free trash removal. Oh, and, you know, it's just so made all much. those, helped me network so it, it stayed successful. I, I have said to you so many times um, on the air, and we've shared many, many uh, uh, minutes together on the radio. I've said to you so many times, I'm going to say it to you again. The, the single coolest thing I think about Freezing Fund for Families is that it's truly a local fundraiser that there's there's no overhead. The, the money stays right here, and it goes directly to uh, families right in our backyard. I mean, you talk about Vermonters helping Vermonters. This is the, def <laughs> this is the definition of it right here. Well, it, it really is. And by if by backyard, you mean the state of Vermont. Yeah, yes. yes. And, and you know I as do. well as I do, um, in Vermont, our community is our state, right? There's only 600,000 people here. Yes, right. You know, so yeah, everyone definitely. Knows, it, it takes a five-minute conversation for two strangers to have a mutual connection somewhere yeah. here in Vermont. If that of course long. It does. If right. that, yeah, if it, that long. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. And so we did some great things um, leading up to the uh, going from uh, ending decade one, starting decade two. Uh, we set the Guinness World Record. We worked, um, I think, in 2010 with uh, Fecto Homes um, for the, the the family of Katie Grant. Yes, I and, remember um, that one well. Katie's parents didn't really want any financial assistance. She was going through chemo. Um, there was a, a large group of them living in a, a small place that really needed an upgrade. And they said, can you just help us? you know, get into a new place. So we kind of did a, a mini version of like a, a home makeover and got them, you know, a new place that they still live in today. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, 
it was right around so we continued on that trend uh growing the event growing the awareness you know kind of making some some strides in the community and, and building some notoriety um in 2011 i spent what seems like a, a day and a half on the phone with the irs and uh said you know if we're really gonna make some changes we need to make this legitimate so um i, I got our, our 501c3 status in, in 2011 and, and for those who don't understand um, how uh, nonprofits and, and fundraising with nonprofits work, um, 501c3 status is what gives people who give to you the opportunity to now say, hey, I made this charitable gift. I yeah. can now make a deduction. Sure. The fact that prior to 2011, that first 12 years, that um, Freezing Fund for Families and just the softball fundraiser was able to accomplish what it was able to accomplish yes. without that status yes. is just amazing. I'm shocking. That is yeah. absolutely remarkable. And, and honestly, I don't Jeez. know if it could be duplicated today with some Correct. of the, the changes with the laws. Yeah. And, and some of the, the changes that we've gone through have really been triggered by need. You know, things have uh, ha had grown out of stuff that I could just kind of handle on my own. Yeah. You know, and, and you need the right people in the right places to stay viable and to be able to continue to grow and continue to offer, you know, the sport that's needed. I promise you, uh, <laughs> folks, I'm going to tell you, uh, the, 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 when, and of course the where here in, in just a little bit, because it's coming up real soon. Um, and I want you to stand by because I'm going to come back to you and I'm going to ask you, uh, some of the highlights, some of the the most uh, memorable times, uh, the best times, and some of the hardest memories, uh, maybe um, because there's there aren't all happy stories with with this that have happy endings. So I'm going to ask you about that in a in a second. Um, but just tell us what's so you're the executive director now, so you're you've got your your hands and your pretty much everything you're overseeing everything now tell me about this dude next to you please introduce him he's a so, big old boy yeah this this uh this fine young gentleman to my yeah. right is uh chris cataract and you've known him since uh, well he's been a participant it's really hard to say yeah. at this point you know, it's <laughs> he, he's been a participant within the, the the softball fundraiser probably you know 10 years or so some somewhere in there yeah, wow I think, I think that the, the team that i started i think we had our first year it been 13 or 14 years ago now. Okay. So you t – tell us again now. Tell me again how old you were and, and you were in high school. So, yeah, when – the first year of this tournament, I was 16. I was – yeah. Jeez, I was in man. high school, senior in high school. That's so remarkable. And uh, what's your – what's your title now? Break that – break so this down for me. My role in the in this organization is that I'm the softball committee chair. So – What the hell does that mean? <laughs> Basically, um, we have – a group of, of amazing volunteers that help put on the softball tournament and uh i head up that so i kind of run the softball tournament for lack of a better term so wow um which you freeze, used to do yeah, for many years freeze Corey up to be able to do a whole lot of other things that i'm that i know we're going to talk about with with some of our other programs that we have and yeah uh, the, you know the vision of where we're headed but uh, it gives us the opportunity to kind of get to that next area and, and take some of the burden off Corey because sure. it's it's getting to be pretty big yeah pretty, pretty big i mean <laughs> you, you so you have a you have not one committee but you have two committees now you have um you have the event itself which is a, th a three-day tournament but you also have an event leading up to it right and i believe an event after it and also a golf tournament and i might even be <coughs> missing something here there might even be more than that so, yes, yes, and yes. Um, we, we do have uh, multiple committees. We have actually two committees now. We have the committee that Chris chairs, which is our snow softball committee. And like he says, um, over kind of sees the <clears throat> the longevity and success of that that our oldest and largest fundraiser. Tons of logistics. There. Tons of tons of logistics. Um, we also have a golf committee now. Um, so as you know. <clears throat> Probably around, well, it was three years ago, we decided to, to try to come up with a, another fundraiser to um, start funding some of these other programs that we wanted to come up with. And uh, I, at the time, I was really kind of running around, you know, I, I was just plugging holes with my fingers and yeah. trying to do a lot of stuff. And um, 
the we we had a great partnership with the Country Club of Vermont, but we weren't finding much um, success. You know that event, which should be, you know, it, it's it's at a premier location. Yep. It, it's a beautiful course. Yeah. You know, should be bringing in some good money. Was I think the first year we made like a thousand dollars. The second year we made like thirteen hundred dollars. And um, as we went and uh, organized a board of directors, and I was uh, in doing so. I was trying to find the right people for the right spots to free up some of my time so I could continue growing the organization. And I was able to talk uh, Reuben Stone and Mark Browning, and you may know them um, from right here in the Barry community. They're uh, the owners of Stone and Browning Property mm -hmm. Management. Mm -hmm. um, I, I met with them one day, and they're golf uh, golf aficionados. They yeah. go around. This is their thing. Say fanatics, really. Fa fanatics. <laughs> that might wow. be the real word. Fanatics. Wow. Yeah. Um, so I, I had a conversation with them and I said, listen, guys, I said, um, do you have any interest? I said, we've got this tournament. I think they had played in it the year before. Is it something you guys are interested in, in, in really steam, steam heading so I can, you know, move on to these other things. I really just don't have the time, but we've got the relationship and there's something there. And they said, absolutely. And, uh, so we met and they, they set their first goal. It was to, uh, fill the tournament. So the first year we had, um, like seven teams and then the second year we only had like six teams yes. you know it's not worth having a golf tournament that's just a get together sure, right you course. want 18 19 teams so their first yeah. goal was to fill the tournament well not only did they fill the tournament with 18 teams this year their first year running this they also raised almost eight thousand dollars so it just it just goes to show you that as we grow, putting the right people yes. in the right spots at the right time is helping helping the organization as a whole grow, so we can then offer offer more help. So, so those the, guys the, did a great job. This has grown to to something that's so big now. Um, I, I, can I can I read the the mission statement? Sure, go or ahead. Do you, or do you want to read it? No, I I, I know you it. Wrote it. You wrote <laughs> uh, it. The mission statement is to alleviate stress and financial hardship for families battling childhood cancer. Quite often, the financial strain families incur overshadows the day-to-day -day challenges that families face. Freezing Fund for Families not only offers financial support, but lives by our motto, we are family. Our We Are Family campaign lets families know that as they enter their journey against childhood cancer, they are not alone. We want them to know that there is hope and support for the challenges that stand before them. Um, that's so remarkable. That's perfectly said. And Thank you. You, you. You guys have received national <laughs> attention for for this event. I mean, not just you know Guinness Book of World Records uh, global attention, but um, I mean, there's other states that are that are trying to trying to copycat us. Uh, basically, <laughs> I mean, I mean. Who in the hell gets together uh, during the winter and plays softball? I mean, Central. you know, there's there's hundreds of people from all over the place that get together to play softball, and not only that, but there are there are people that are asking me about it all year round. When is the next one? When yeah. can we get involved? How can we help? What can we do? Bunch of crazy <laughs> freaking Vermonters, man. <laughs> Wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what? So, uh, the cap for I think registration was February eighth, if my memory serves me, and I think the limit was what sixty eight teams. So you can actually still register right now. You can uh, until February twenty third. Okay, um, is is when our registration deadline is, and we're capping at sixty eight teams this year. Okay. Um, okay. Your your hashtags are tremendous. I mean, whoever's Thank managing you. your social media is doing an outstanding job. Um, That's true. I mean, not to toot my own horn, but I think I made the hashtags. Uh, so I'm gonna I take mean, credit for those. The first hashtags they're I've awesome. Made in my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I mean, um, yeah, and and you've got a communications. Uh, uh, person in charge now director i guess well we yeah we so we've got a um so i'll speak for myself chris may not feel the same way but i'm getting older and i may not be up to date with with all of the media outlets that <laughs> some of our younger yeah. you know players you have kids are that are helping you out I, though I right and we've got this wonderful young lady uh from spalding high school danielle trottier who is our junior social media director and she manages <clears throat> all the things that uh i i don't do well uh, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, all the, 
you know, for for all I know, we may have a YouTube channel. Yeah, but. yeah, right. <laughs> no, it's quite possible. So, <laughs> tell me about uh, some of the beneficiaries. You got a, a little four year old boy from Swanton, I think. Am I right? Yeah, Jaden. Yeah, tell me about Jaden. So, Jaden has a, a case. His, he has ALL. It's called. It's a acute lymphosatic leukemia. Um, he was diagnosed this past spring, and he's been having treatment in Burlington, Vermont. So it's been um, a real hardship for his family, right? His mom has been having to transport him back and forth for all the treatments and stuff. And, and uh, single mom, right? I was going to say she's doing it all on her own. So um, they moved back in with her parents and they're, you know, doing that thing. And, you know, he's working through his treatment. He's really, you know, happy and and go lucky. We had an opportunity to meet with him um, this past week. So, um, Things are looking okay, we think, we hope, right? That's always yeah. the hope is that we don't have to do this anymore, but we do, so we will. But, yeah. So mom, uh, Melinda, has had to move in with her parents. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's you – know, cancer is not a fun thing, right? And it takes a lot to do, and it takes a lot to deal with, and it takes time and energy and effort and love and support. And, you know, you can't do it on your own, and – nobody should have to do it on their own. And I think that's really why we're around. But um, that being said, yeah, she had to move in with her parents because she couldn't afford to live on her own. You know, I'll give you a stat. And this is where the growth of the organization has really educated me. And um, if I can spread education as I spread our mission, um, I'd love for people to take, take some of that with them. Um, so Adam Fortune uh, was, he's actually taking a different role at the hospital now, but was the pediatric oncology social worker for Vermont Children's Hospital. And I was fortunate enough to recruit him to be on our board of directors. Wow. To help direct us as to where the largest need is and where we should start growing programs next. And Adam gave me these stats, and and they they blew my mind. In 95% of cases um, of childhood cancer in a two-income household, 95% of these cases one of the parents has to get done work. Yeah. 95%. Yeah. Right? So that's cutting your income in half. Now get this. In um, 90% of single family income households, that income is reduced by 75%. So do the math on that. That's crazy. If, I mean, and sh- if you're making $20,000 a year, right, as a single mom, between you're not working so you're probably getting some form of state aid or or, or you know uh, a stipend or reach up that's going to equate to about five thousand dollars who can live on five thousand dollars a year with not a kid o- not only live <laughs> jd not only live but how can you offer the best outcome for your child on that how can you get them to the the right um how can you travel to get a second opinion how can you travel for treatment how can you? There are just so many. How can you? How can you pay for gas to get gas, there and food. back? You know, forget about insurance. You, I mean, you take Jaden's uh, Jaden's family's challenges. If her parents weren't there, what do you do? Where do you live? Right. You know, and that's where we come in. That's where we've really transitioned from. Um, you know, this great fundraiser that Cass and Shelley started 20 years ago to really taking the the 30,000 foot view of. How can we help all these struggles? Because each each case is so different. Yeah. Uh, and this year, the the two families both have the the same diagnosis. They both have ALL. Yeah. But far different paths. You know, and, and it's and that's the awareness I'm really trying to bring to people. And those stats, when Adam told me that, it, it just blew my mind. Yeah. It blew my mind. Boy, uh, that that's remarkable that he's on the on the board. That's that's incredible. Um, tell me about Julia. She's 15 years old and part of her story is her nine-year-old brother these are gives me these goosebumps are, man <laughs> given giving me goosebumps right now i mean uh, and these are two kids who live just a few miles from here in, in yeah. east montpelier so yeah so julia um she also has all um she's had a little bit different of a treatment path so she's she's had to go down to boston um and part of her treatment actually she needed to have a bone marrow transplant um and there was another hero in her family who they they all got tested uh, (laughs) and her little brother ryan nine-year-old boy 
uh, was a bone marrow bat match. And I was talking to Crystal um, to kind of find out how that went, what that conversation was. And, and uh, <laughs> he goes, she goes, when I asked him if he would do it, he was like, of course I'll do it. She's my sister. I would do anything. And I, and I was like, oh, my God, like I, I can't even imagine what what they, you know, went through. So there they are, right? The whole family's down in Boston. Um, Ryan's going through a bone marrow transplant. Julia's going through a bone marrow transplant and battling ALL. And, uh, you know, dad's home trying to work and mom's at the hospital traveling back and forth to Boston. and Not working. Right. Trying to manage the whole household and trying to do all that stuff. And uh, thankfully, they're back now. Um, Julia's, Julia's home now. Uh, she's, she's hanging out there. Ryan, I just saw him at a basketball game. He was on my, my flag football team uh, this summer, so he's, he's killing it. Um, but, yeah, yeah right. so they're, they're doing that stuff. And, and, I mean, it's just it's crazy. I, I, um, I hope these kids are watching this podcast and – I just hope that um, whoever's watching this podcast, uh, whether you you know these children or not, um, reach out in some way and show show the family some love. And one of the ways that you can do that, of course, is to not only come to the event, which is the first weekend in March, Friday, mm -hmm. Saturday, Sunday, yeah. be a spectator. Come come in, I mean, even if you're there for an hour, bring your kids, bring your family, um, support the vendors that are gonna be there who are all donating a portion of their proceeds, I believe. Yeah. Um, some incredible food that's always cooked up. Um, there's always music, it's always a good time. Um, bring your, your children, show them what Vermont is doing to help out other so, Vermonters. I'd also say too, we don't charge admission. So yeah. you come check out some awesome softball. And this year there's hopefully, fingers crossed, there's gonna be a lot of snow. Um, now, is there, so. is there, yeah, there, yeah, there will be. Um, now, is there a bucket going around? Is there a, a donation place? Is there a 50-50 raffle? So if someone comes up, they, they watch a game, they're, they're, not, they're not playing on a team, but they want, they've been moved to make a, a donation. So, yes, they, they're more than welcome to, to come up to the fields and experience the, the fair-like fair atmosphere that, that happens up there and uh, find our wonderful volunteers at the, the, the clothing area and, and feel free to make a donation. Um, but I would also encourage folks who are interested and maybe interested in learning a little bit more about uh, who we are uh, what we do, where we plan to go over the next 20 years, um, and, and maybe, you know, make a, a long-term contribution sure. to, to help us, you know, get to our next 20 years and even meet meet some of our, our past families um, to and, come to the, our, our the dinner. There. Sure, yeah. your dinner dance. Wh what's the date on that? So it's February 23rd, and it's here in Barrie at the Elks Club. Um, Where it's been for a long time. It has, yeah. it has. Uh, for a long time, it was the only place that could house that number of people. That's right. Um, doors open at, at 5 o'clock. Uh, dinner's at 6. Um, we're going to have uh, three guest speakers. All uh, are either past beneficiaries or family members of past beneficiaries. Um, I've got confirmation of over 80 past beneficiaries and their family members that are coming back this year <sighs> to help us celebrate to, to learn even even then you know some of our early beneficiaries may not be aware of what we're able to offer families now or where how we've gotten where we are now or where we plan to go so they're coming back and it, it, it's I, my hope is this is going uh, <clears throat> to be one of the the, the best uh, banquets that we've had and just um, with who's going to be in the room you know there's going to sure. be a lot of people with um, similar similar outcomes, similar paths, similar conversations they can have all in one area to kind of say, wow, you know, don't, what we got here. Don't know what the governor's uh, schedule is, is like, and, and uh, I don't mean to, to speak on behalf of his administration, but, man, it would sure be awesome if he showed up. Hashtag yeah. Phil Scott. Right? Hashtag <laughs> Phil Scott, please. <laughs> you know, I, no, I'm just saying. I mean, how could you, um, if you, if you're anyone that's high up in the political office, how could you not recognize what 
you, you know what what this state is doing mm -hmm. just with this one event alone i mean this is metamorphosized into something that's so massive now and we should say for that dinner dance you don't have to be a participant you don't have to be a player registered uh or or anything you can just come and enjoy everything is there is there a, a dj or band or a raffle or no so, so uh, this year with um being our, our 20th and and uh, the growth of the organization we've taken this time that like you said used to be the the dinner and dance yes yeah. to really take that time to um welcome our our new uh members of the of the freezing fund sure. for families family sure um to uh, introduce prior members who still come back and support to highlight the support we've gotten from people to um to grow awareness of our organization to um to, to recognize we, we ha actually have a a giving society now to recognize people who have made gifts of certain levels to help us continue on our mission at that wow. banquet so we use it more as a information and recognition and, and highlighting um, the the families that 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 we're bringing in uh, any given year. So I also have to say about about that right too is is all of that stuff. And on top of that, we have a silent auction and raffle. Yeah. Um, and we're gonna have some killer items there. Our volunteers have been working really hard. Um, and I don't want to you know drop names, but uh, Super Bowl Forty Nine signed Tom Brady football will be there for drop the names auction. brother I mean, drop the names you know so uh rob gronkowski i don't know if you've heard of that guy i have heard but, of him uh, we'll have us an autographed helmet from him oh. so i mean you know if wow. if you have no other reason to come if you don't want to learn about the mission or sure uh come for that stuff and then get educated in the meantime <laughs> now what's what's the whole connor drury fund and i understand that national life just threw about 7k into it am i right uh, National Life and their employees threw about 7K into it. Wow. So Thank you, um, National Life. Go, right. Thank you very much. Um, so going back through the progression of Freezing Fund for Family, so I think in 2000, I think it was 15, um, it was 14 or 15, I, I, I had the, the misfortune of having uh, more nominees for our softball benefit then we had space to help them. <clears throat> and I says, boy, I said, you know, this isn't, this isn't working the way we're doing it. Yes. Right. We need to make some changes because, oh, you know, yeah. we're, we're, you know, for every three we miss, there's three more for every. Sure. And we've, we've got three this year. <clears throat> we, we talked about that. We've got two. But two. Oh, that's right. I'm thinking of the, uh, of, of uh, is Ryan. Right. right. Yeah, he's the so nine-year-old. We have uh, two points, he's, you know, five or right. whatever. He's, Ryan's the rock star. <laughs> right, he's, right. He's, yeah, yeah, Ryan's, yeah, Ryan's yeah. the rock star in that um, event. <clears throat> so in, in doing so, uh, I went, I said, I, I can't do this alone, right? And that's kind of where Chris and, and, and I's relationship um, really took off as far as uh, the Freezing Fund for Families connection. He was at the, the softball tournament right. doing great work, raising tons of money for uh, the organization. And he said to me, he says, hey, you know, I, I really want to help. You know, what can I do? I want to do more. And uh, I said to him, I said, Chris, I get this every year as I walk around and, and I, I network with people. I said, everyone wants to help. They're caught in the moment. Yes, you know, of and course. We want help. I said, if you really feel that strongly about helping, I said, reach out to me in a couple months. Let, yeah. the, let the dust settle. Yes. Make sure you have the time for the commitment. Make sure you have... You know that that you can really do it. It's a year. It's a year round thing. It, there's a little For bit sure. of it year round, exactly. Yeah. It's and, and so he did. So Chris reached out. So that was really the first step in um, reorganizing the organization and brought Chris in to take you know a huge lift off of my plate. Um, and I was able to recruit recruit um, you know specific um, skill set board members to really help help make decisions and make sure we're going in the right direction. I had mentioned Adam Fortune, you know, yeah. who, who better to have to help lead the way with, with what you want to offer than the, the guy that meets these families when they're first diagnosed. Sure. Pediatric oncology social worker. Uh, I brought in Chad Hewitt from Sullivan and Powers there in Montpelier. Uh, Chad's a nonprofit auditor. So he's our CFO and he manages all of our finances, all of our balance sheets and keeps us current with the IRS 
from his phone in a meeting. All the stuff that in 2011, when I yeah. first set up the, our 501c3 status, like I said, I felt like I was a day and a half on the phone. Sure. And Chad, it's, it's what he does, so what wow. he knows best. And just as we're going through these, I want to make sure I point out to everybody that uh, everybody that Corey mentions is a volunteer. And Corey thank you, thank is a volunteer. Like we don't we don't take any money for what we're doing. We don't want. I mean, I don't want any money for what we're doing. But and I don't. I think that'd be the sentiment across the board. Wow. I think in all right now we have uh, ten members on our board of directors. Probably a dozen uh, softball committee. You mention uh, them, man. Air, okay. Yeah. Air them out. All right. Uh, Don Morrill is our chairman. Uh, Sarah Childs is our vice chair. Chris Benoit is our treasurer. Judy Emmons is our secretary. Chris Cataract also holds a seat on the board as the uh, uh, Snow Softball Committee Chair. Adam Fortune, as I mentioned, pediatric oncology social worker. Chad Hewitt. Mark Browning and Ruben Stone um, both sit on the board but share one vote as uh, the co-chairs of the golf committee. And then, as I mentioned earlier, our social media director, Danielle Trottier, and um, a, a new a new add-on, recently retired, Lucy McTeague, is coming in and taking care of thank you letters, deposits, paperwork, you know, administrative stuff for us. And, and, and that's just the board, right? Yeah, that's just the board. So we've got, uh, what, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, and then another twelve on the, the softball committee, twenty-four, and then probably another ten. So we're looking at thirty-five to forty people who volunteer. They're not a paid person. Yeah in the group this that volunteer awesome. their time to make all of this happen 68 teams <clears throat> so what's been the average every year uh, just somewhere right around yeah 60. so so we float around 60 62 yeah so between had, 40 and 60 yeah is depending on the year some and years people can get two teams in sometimes right. they only get the one in depending on how much snow there is people sure. register or not and all that stuff there are so many businesses that uh, organized teams. There's also individuals and families that that make and have made this a tradition for so long. But there's so many incredible organizations and 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 businesses that <clears throat> form teams together. I want to know who gets who gets down and dirtiest the most. Where is the uh, the ugliest competition between two teams? Who would those would those teams be? Do you want names or <laughs> days? <laughs> right? uh, if if you had to, uh, you know, if you had to to guess, to to. So if if it's all right, I'm going to pivot a little bit, please, and only because uh, there's a there's a something I want to talk about that yeah. that is a you know the biggest competition that happened at the field last year had nothing to do with softball, mostly because uh, the teams that that did it. Or terrible at softball. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> so, so um, the team we freeze ours, uh, which is the team that I founded a bunch of years ago, and then the team uh, Barry Town Fire Department had a battle to see who could raise the most money. Oh wow! So uh, they didn't win. They didn't yeah. play on Sunday. They didn't play on were they, Saturday. Were people I don't like think. Were, 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 were people like selling motorcycles out of their garage? So at, at one point, I think that some of the people on We Freeze were like shaking down their their teammates to see if they had extra dollars or cents in their pocket. But um, between those two teams, they raised over seven thousand dollars. Just two teams. Just those two teams. Wow, man! So uh, that was amazing to see, and we recognized them both uh, for yeah. their their huge contribution. We invited them back on. Sunday as part of the award ceremony to uh, be involved right. in that. But there's competition everywhere. I mean, we have – this is such a well-known tournament now that we have teams that come up that are <laughs> summer league tournament teams that come up to play in this just to and, know, and, get and, that and, recognition. And we have to say this because we haven't. It's not just – Vermonters. I mean, no. there's Maine no, coming absolutely. in. There's Massachusetts. We're, we're four, four or five states every year. Yeah, and we had a Canadian team too. I mean, we're, we're international. Um, so which, which is you know it's it's fantastic for the economy too. I yeah. mean just our local economy alone, you know. Yeah. But you know, so what time are we starting on Friday? How late will it go? When will it resume the next day? And when will things finish up? So that's really going to depend on how many teams we actually get signed up. I know the only thing I know and for fields. and how many fields and what condition they're in. So yeah, uh, depending on how many we can use. Um, the only thing I can say for sure 
is that we're going to do an opening ceremony around 5.30 on, on a Friday. Friday, yeah. Yeah, yeah. wow. Um, and that's and then, March 1st? March 1st, yeah. So that will be our opening ceremony. We're going to have a, a ceremonial first pitch that will be thrown out to represent or to you know, bring in the 20th year. and Barrytown School. Barrytown uh, School. And the, the, the rec fields out behind the, the yeah. school. Um, also that Friday night, I can say we're going to have some fireworks. Wow. So it's going to be pretty awesome. Wow. So is that North Star that's putting those on? Or? North Star is, yeah, fought, shooting them off. Um, yeah. So it's going to be a pretty pretty great show. Wow. And then, you know, we'll go until probably 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock that night, depending on how many teams we have, and then we'll start right back up at 7 o'clock the next morning. Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and it'll go all day so, All Saturday. day on Saturday until, you know, 9, 10, maybe at night. 11 o'clock at night. Who knows? Night, yeah, yeah. Games. We have, and we have fun things throughout the day, too. Sure. Home run derby, you know, yeah, raffles. That's another thing I wanted to mention, too. So that's all, that's maybe you don't want to play in softball, right, but you <clears> want to yeah. do something. Yeah. Maybe you can come swing a stick. Yeah. We have a, we have, you don't have to be on a team to be in our home run derby. Wow. It's ten bucks for ten balls. Wow! And see if you can win. We got a cool trophy that you get. And really? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. So that that actually really took off um, last year, and it was great because we kind of stop everything in the middle of the day. Yeah, right. And everyone like by the <laughs> the, the last three or four guys, or there were some women that played too because you were on the, yeah. the little league field, so it's a short fence. Yeah. Um, the, and, and everyone just kind of gathered around. It was like uh, I was like, "Wow, look at all the people standing yeah. here!" I feel like I should be yeah. selling hot dogs. So I do a yeah, showman, right, little right. showman act, and I'll I do I announce everybody as they come up and heckle them during their thing on a loudspeaker. So that's it's, it's just a lot of fun, and it's a great time. And and we're going to centrally locate it this year, so um, you know it'll be right on our our main row, um, close to the vendors, close to the bathrooms, close to you know, food close to fun and everything. It's, yeah. it's exciting. It's, it's awesome. It's, you know, you know, I remember, um, a few years, Corey, you coming into the studio with me, uh, as we were getting ready for this and talking about, uh, the forecast for the, uh, for the upcoming weekend. And there have been, uh, a few years that I remember where we had some incredibly crappy, forecasts and you you almost in a in a sick kind of a way almost seemed like you were more excited about it <laughs> <laughs> it's true and I, I i hope i i wasn't trying to give off that vibe but no. um when i when i <laughs> when i stopped playing and started running it maybe i was yeah <laughs> well, and, and jd i have to ask when you say crappy forecast for the weekend yep. you're talking about nice Yes, weather. of course, right. of, of right. course. It's, you know, snowing and and that kind of stuff is what we want. You guys have, you guys, <laughs> you, you have never not played. I, I don't think. No, and I have to. I really have to give credit to the the town of Barry and their recreation no board for that. Um, over the last, you know, well, I don't know how long it's been up there, but just say fifteen years, we've really forged a, a strong relationship with them and. Um, all of their their seats on the board and board members really now understand our mission and what we're trying to accomplish. Um, it's not just asking them to host a fun event there. They're sure. seeing the families we're helping. Sure. And, you know, in early years, you know, that's where the no cleat rule had came in so many yeah. years ago because we didn't want to do damage to the fields, yeah. right? And now we, we had a year... It was a couple of years ago where it rained Saturday. We were down to like my, little to no snow. My first year, yeah. There yeah. was green grass, yeah. and the, and I said to the town, and they said, "Corey, just do it. We'll seed. On, we'll seed in the spring." You know where, fifteen years ago, they probably they may have pulled the plug. Yeah. You know, but they saw the good work that we've done. Sure. And the families we've helped, and and you know the the numbers i mean we're at over four hundred thousand dollars given away yeah and between the softball beneficiary program and the connor jury fund over 40 families helped you know and, and i don't think i answered the the converse, the question about the connor mm -hmm. jury fund but this is maybe a good segue into that um so in 2014 i got chris to offload some of my my work i, I recruited the board uh, first thing we did was sat down and, and talked to Adam because that year I had to tell four families no. Okay. And Adam, again, just such a wealth of knowledge in uh, pediatric oncology and, and, and the social work that goes on behind it, informed me that at Vermont Children's Hospital, just at Vermont Children's Hospital, 
There are 26 to 30 new cases of childhood cancer each year. So let that sit for a second, right? New cases. So there's 30 this year, and on the path we run, we help two, right? That leaves how many? 28. So there's 30 the next year. Now we're at 58. We help two, right? Now there's 56. The next year there's 86. We help two. It's compounding instead of helping more, right? And I said, well, You're Adam. You're talking about one hospital. What? Right. And that's the other thing. That In a small state. Yeah. In a small state. Exactly. That 26 to 30 is what Vermont Children's Hospital diagnoses each year. That doesn't even count for the southeastern portion right. of the state. Nope. And the, say, northeastern portion of the state that all uh, get treatment and diagnosis at Dartmouth in New Hampshire. Yeah. Right? So, we're, I mean, we, we, we're not even scratching the surface on one of the two hospitals that treat. Right? And that's where we really had to make this bold change. Yes. So I asked Adam, I said, Adam, what is the first thing, and he's been, you, you know, you've been doing this for so long, what is the first thing we can do to really make an impact? And he said, uh, well, there was, uh, I think it was the Isaac Turnbaugh Fund that was well utilized to the point where it ran out of money. And it was a $250 stipend that was given to families when they first found out their child was diagnosed with cancer. And it was easy access. The application process was quick. It was a recommendation from a social worker or a doctor to the family fund. And, um, and that's how they got the money. Because what you don't know, unless you've been through um, a bout of, of childhood cancer or cancer of any kind, and I can attest to this. Um, as you know, when I was 12, my sister passed away from leukemia. Yeah. You know, and I remember her diagnosis in, you know, 1984, 86 at the Waterbury Pool. She was covered up in a blanket, you know, cold on a 90 degree day. And I didn't see my dad or my stepmom for two weeks because it was treatment, test, here. I was bounced from aunt to uncle to aunt while I while they were figuring that out. And so this stipend is there for them when you know, you've got a week of vacation, but you've just taken three weeks off to figure yes. out what's going on. Right. Right? Sure. It, it, it's it, it's there to help you, like, right away. Until we can figure out a way to get you more help, it's there to help you. But what happened with the Isaac Turnbaugh grant, like it says, it ran out of money. Right? So a, a well-to-do uh, grandparent left a, a large sum of money. They doled it out. It was well used. Money's gone. So I said, well, we can't we can't have that. Right? So uh, I reached out to uh, some, some wonderful families that had, that had either helped us in the past or we had helped them, and the Drury family agreed to meet with me. And I said to them, I said, you know, I, I would love um, for you to help me. This is what we'd like to do. We'd like to map out a, a fund that gives you stipends. Um, love for your input on, on how you'd like to add it. Love to put Connor's name on it. And uh, they agreed to commit a certain amount for um, five years. We agreed to commit a certain amount for five years. And I also agreed to fundraise for it to make it sustainable. And by sustainable, I mean that the money that we have will produce enough money to pay out what we're paying every year. Wow. So that means when we're gone, Corey's goal is to make that live forever. And I'm happy to announce so that you had uh, you'd mentioned the, the $7,000 from National Life and its employees. Well, with that contribution, we were able to do that two years ahead of schedule. We've now endowed that at $20,000, which is going to spin off fifteen dollars to $2,400 each year for us to pay out these, these stipends. And we also have two years' worth of stipend money set aside while it, while it, it takes these next couple of years to work. So sustainability is huge, right? We don't ever want to say that we ran out of something. We want to say, hey, we're not giving enough of this. Maybe we can use it for something else. Yeah. You know, sustainability is huge. And it's growing. <clears throat> that is so. You got I told me you we a had... loss of words, brother. <laughs> when I told you we had a lot of changes since the last time I saw you, I, I meant it. We've really done some good work these last last few years, like significant lifts these last three or four years. Chris, stand by because I'm going to ask you this uh, same question that sure, I'm man. about to ask Corey here in a second. So what's what's uh, what's the best memory that you have of this event, and what's the hardest 
experience <laughs> that uh, if there is if there is one that you're willing to mention, um, I know as I said earlier, not every uh, ending is a happy one. Uh, we've lost some amazing kids, um, but you've also been so blessed to to watch so many of them continue to live and and flourish in their in their lives. But do you do you have one particular memory I, you know i think so and i think uh they kind of correlate so i don't know if it's my best memory but the most impactful one that i have that's kind of you know y you see it's that mental photograph that just doesn't go away right yeah. is it was probably my first year it, it must have been the first year the guinness world record year and uh cass said to me he says hey come with me for a minute we walked up to one of the fields in the back or something up on the hill, kind of where they shot the fireworks. And he said, I want you to just do me a favor. I said, what's that? He said, just take a minute, you know, because all the lights are on, the games are going on, you know, things are things are happening, moving and shaking. He says, I want you to just take this in. And I'm like, what? He says, look around. He says, all these people are here for, and I think at the time it was Katie. Or, yeah, it must have been Katie. He said, are, are here for Katie and you brought them all together you brought them all together for that that common get common cause and I was like wow you know and it kind of opened your eyes to the, the the good work that you're doing in the the natural ability people have especially Vermonters to help right I think it's just innate in them it's just something that they 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 naturally gravitate to like I said sure. we're one community in yeah Vermont. that's right the flip side of that um, one of my hardest memories is the, the, the polar opposite of that. And in a, a day that I, I, I took a, a mental photo of what great work we were doing, um, you know, six years later, I, I said I had to say no to four families. And I really second guessed that work. I was like, am I really doing good work? You know? And that was hard. And, and don't get me wrong, the loss of, of any of our beneficiaries is definitely difficult. But um, for me personally, it was saying, am I really doing my best work here? Am I? How? If you are, how are you still saying no? Why are you not finding a solution to this, this ever-growing uh, challenge that these families are facing? And I took a long, hard look, and I made some... Well, you can ask Chris. They were really kind of quick decisions, right? Things really started happening after that year. I said, listen, yeah. I'm done. I can't sit on my hands. We're going to move and shake, and I'm either going to make this work and, and be available, or it's just going to crash and burn. Well, I and think that, in the evidence of that is the endowment of the Connor Drury <coughs> program two years ahead of schedule. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, yeah. Wow. Um, Chris, what say you, man? So I've been thinking, I mean – there's ups and downs in every year. And, and I, I think I have to say that, you know, there's two things that really stood out to me as kind of really memorable, like great experiences uh, for me. And, and they're both kind of a little different than you might expect, right? Because we give out, you know, pretty substantial checks to some really deserving people. But um, a couple of years ago, we had a beneficiary um, and he really enjoyed you know, being outdoors, and unfortunately, because of his diagnosis, he couldn't uh, get out there as much as he wanted to. So, um, we worked with and were able to secure from uh, the Berry Fish and Game Club a lifetime hunting and fishing license, and, and wow. we gave that to him. Wow, um, you guys! On you know, on that Sunday, and that was like, you know, I just remember, and I'll never forget, like bending down onto one knee and handing him that certificate, right? Um, so that was a really cool thing. And then the second thing, which I think kind of straddles, uh, both the, the best moment and, and either the most scary or the, you know, the worst moment we'll find out, I guess, as we move forward was, uh, this past year, uh, Corey, uh, during the, uh, final, you know, presentation asked for the microphone. And that's always a scary thing when Corey asked for the microphone, but, um, and then he did something that I never expected. And, and that was, he took off. So he's been wearing this, this pink camouflage hoodie for eight years yeah. with an orange hat. Yes. I've, I've, um, I've I'm sure that picture. you've seen it. I've, <laughs> I've, got the, I've got it. <laughs> so for the first time at the snow softball tournament that I saw, he took those off um, and he took them off to give them to me. And it was like wow. a passing of the torch and it like, 
it was crazy to wow. just like go through that whole wow i'm really you know i'm really here kind of thing right and <laughs> Jeez, man. so yeah wow food vendors and so many so many people that are not playing softball um but keeping a fire warm yeah a warming pit and the food vendors give give a shout out to so we have jockey hollow catering uh is our is our big food vendor he's a, he yeah. comes up um they come up every year and and they kill it they make some oh, amazing God, yeah. food and we only need one food vendor with them. right with them we only need the one <laughs> he has everything yeah. from <laughs> breakfast sandwiches to fried dough yeah. and if he doesn't have it yeah he'll make it i'm pretty, <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty right. sure like we had a steak dinner one night and we didn't even know about it and it was Jeez, yeah. no but man. they're they're great over there and and <clears throat> couldn't ask for nicer people to work with with that and you know you, you talk about a fire so we get our all our firewood is sourced from ourselves really volunteers yeah do that and get it um speaking of all i think you should take a minute and really give a shout out to all your committee and all of our volunteers a shout out to all of our committee and all of our volunteers by um, name <laughs> so we There's have a long our, list of them yeah there is in our clothing uh section we have uh sarah and wanda and cheryl and julie that uh, really take care of all of our our uh, clothing and and I gotta say I gotta give a special shout out to Wanda because she took a burden off my back after uh, you know only having to do it for two years but she did all of our clothing ordering this year so um, it was amazing for her and that group to get together and do that uh, we have Judy who kind of runs our brackets so she's you'll always find her report games to her she runs all the brackets and does all that stuff uh, we have Will, who tends our fire all weekend, so we never have to worry about a fire. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, so um, it's it's great. Um, and then Sarah kind of dual roles. I mentioned her um, selling clothing, but she also runs our front gate. So um, she's the first smiling face that you'll see. And and uh, <laughs> She's lady kissing you on the cheek as you walk in. <laughs> That's right. Wow. That's right. <laughs> wow. And then we have, um, we have Jeff and Wendell, who are kind of our right hand as far as equipment, maintenance, Securing fields, moving fields, setting up lights, taking down lights, moving trash can. I mean, you name it, they do it. It's Jeez. it's uh, great. And this year we actually brought on uh, a couple more volunteers to help out. So uh, we have Brian, who's going to be kind of working with Wendell and Jeff around that. And then we have Sabrina and Jade, <clears throat> excuse me, who are going to be kind of helping out with with uh, whatever whatever we need as far as that stuff. It so. really is a it, it really is a family. It yeah. really is a family. It is, and most wow. of them are related to Corey. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Freezing fun for families dot com is the website. If you uh, would like to see some remarkable pictures and learn more, uh, get involved, donate, help out accomplishments over the years. Uh, you guys have assisted 24 Vermont families totaling over four hundred and thirty thousand um, dollars created a board of directors in 2016, established charity golf tournament in 2016, same year that you created the Connor Drury Fund, uh, registered as a 501c3 in 2008, and of course, uh, the big year 2008 also, the Guinness Book of World Records for the largest snow softball tournament on the planet, and it's right here in our backyard in uh, Barrytown, Vermont. Um, you guys are the real uh, heroes of our community, and I am so honored to know both of you um, and proud to know you guys. Um, you guys are, uh, you know, I, I said that uh, when I started this podcast that I wanted to get the, uh, the real movers and shakers of our community um, on this show. And, uh, man, I hope you guys will come back. Let's, let's get you back next time we're going to be talking about green grass and golf um for for sure but good luck march one two and three barrytown schools um no matter where you are get off at uh, exit six or seven off uh off of uh, 89 and make your way to this incredible event where all proceeds are supporting <coughs> families right here locally in our great state of vermont pleasure to have you guys in here thanks again thank, thank you, you so much, so much. uh i could chat more with you but um we're we're uh, we're out of time but please come back soon uh let's let's make this a regular thing you guys are 
you guys have just blown me away. Um, I'm, I'm so impressed. Um, our sponsors, CBDCrave.com, the quality you deserve. Top brands delivered right to your door at CBDCrave.com. Peak Entertainment of Vermont and New Hampshire. Peak DJ. Uh, com and Fontaine Forestry and Millworks of East Montpelier, Route 14, just down from Bragg Farm, and of course, Channel 192 and 194, where we are now, CVTV, Central Vermont Television. Thank you so much. We'll catch you next time. This is going to do it for Aired Out.